Some of the most common questions I get about 3D printing and some of the most common questions I see online have to do with the bed leveling process. Now this makes a lot of sense. A good first layer on a 3D print is one of the most important parts of that 3D print. So in this video, I'm going to cover that process beginning to end. Everything from starting with a good spring height to getting your Z offset adjustment just right with your auto bed leveler, moving into leveling your four corners, and then using your auto bed leveler to get that perfect first layer. And what does that perfect first layer look like? That's what I'm doing today right here on Curzy Fabrications. Let's get going. This video is sponsored by Nico Industries. Stay tuned towards the end of the video where I print a full 3D prop that they designed. For you to be able to follow along in this video, I'm going to make a couple of assumptions. Number one, I'm going to assume that you're running Marlin on your 3D printer and that you can get to the Marlin interface. Now, if you're worried that you love using the touchscreen for all of your daily printing, don't be, because what we do under Marlin is just for the leveling process. If you want to switch back to the touchscreen interface on something like a Big Tree Tech display after you're done leveling, you can do that. We've already saved the settings and you'll be ready to go. But if you want to continue printing under Marlin, that's of course all right also. Second of all, I am assuming that you have some sort of auto bed leveling system and that can be a BL touch or any number of other probing systems that are available. Essentially, once that gets to Marlin, it doesn't really care what kind of probe you're running, so that really doesn't matter. Next up, I am going to recommend that you get a feeler gauge set such as this one here that has a number of different depth gauges Ultimately, we're gonna need one of them, but this is how they typically come. If you're interested in getting a very inexpensive one like I'm using here, I'm gonna include a link down in the description to where you can purchase one. But I am going to assume this, even though a sheet of paper will technically work, this will give you much better results than any sort of sheet of paper. Other than that, I think that's the only assumptions that I'm making. And while I'm using an Ender 5 Plus printer in this video, this should work on pretty much any kind of printer. And if I start talking about bed leveling or leveling left to right, just understand the same process will still work even if you're running a typical i3 style printer. You'll just need to understand that you're gonna be leveling the gantry to the bed rather than the bed to the gantry. So without further ado, let's move over to the printer and let's get started. Here I am at the printer, and the first thing I'm going to do doesn't involve the firmware at all. What I'm going to do now is actually make sure that my bed holding system, in this case these black bars on either side, is level with my X gantry. Technically this isn't required. Technically you can go ahead and level the bed to the gantry without actually leveling these plates themselves. But what I'm doing is making sure that the movement is a lot smoother by getting these as level as possible. So what am I going to need? I'm just going to need a ruler and I'm just going to level each side using the couplers at the bottom of the Z-axis to turn each of these independent Z-axis motors, which I have on this printer, to make sure that the bed is as level as possible. So here I'm going to pick a convenient measurement, whatever works for this particular height that we're currently at. So I'm going to choose seven centimeters. I'm going to level up as close to as possible with that seven centimeters. Now what you might find when you try to start leveling is that it wants to drop or something on one or both sides. If that happens, you're going to have to just do your best to play with both sides until they're roughly level with one another. So now I'm actually closer to about eight. I'm going to try eight and I'm also being very careful at this point not to actually press down on the sides because that can move things around. So this side is actually almost on eight, so I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit. Again, if it falls a little bit, that's fine. We can compensate for that later, but there we go. I've got both of these at the eight centimeter mark, and so we're ready to go with the next step. So at this point in time, you may be asking, well, what about the Z-Stepper Auto Align using G34? Couldn't I use that here? 
Sure you could. In fact, in my G34 video, I describe exactly how to do that by cranking down the springs all the way and using G34 to level the bed on the left and the right. Now what I found though is that this isn't necessary, that by doing the ruler method for your first step, you can then use the G34 to just correct it in the case that you have any concern about your bed falling on the left and the right or unevenly. So that's what I do now. I've added the G34 to my startup G code, which means that every time that I start a print, it makes sure that my bed is level left to right. But that's what I'm using G34 for these days, not for this initial alignment as I just showed in this video. Next up in the bed leveling process, I want to compress these springs between the bed and the frame holding the bed as much as possible while giving us a little bit of wiggle room in case we need to make some adjustments when we go to our manual bed leveling process. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find a convenient place to measure. So on this printer, it's very easy. We've got two metal bars here that we can use to adjust to a certain distance. I'm going to choose a convenient measurement somewhere around three millimeters and then I'm going to compress the springs to that level on all corners. Now as you're going around you may have to go around a couple of times to get it quite right because they're not going to want to compress evenly if you try to compress one corner too fast first. So now going around back I'm going to do the same thing on the back springs. And this doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't actually leveling the bed. All this is doing is preparing to level the bed so that we have a really good starting point and we're good to go on that step. Now, ideally, before we go any further, we want to heat up the bed and the nozzle for proper leveling. Now, why is that? Well, there's something called thermal expansion. Thermal expansion is as you heat materials, they are going to want to expand due to the heat you're adding to them. And that is going to warp, expand your bed, and expand your nozzle, changing all of the distances across the bed and wherever your nozzle touches. So if we want an accurate bed leveling, we're actually going to want to do this now, even before we home the printer, because since we're using a probe, the bed surface is going to change and because of that we are going to need that probe to actually contact the bed in a correct location where it's going to be when it's actually printing. So I'm going to go into Marlin, I'm going to go to temperature, I'm going to say preheat PLA which are going to be our PLA settings and then I'm just going to say preheat PLA. As you'll notice that sets both the nozzle and the bed. Now those two are going to heat up when we get to full temperature. We'll keep moving. Okay, at this point we're all heated up. Now one thing you'll need to make sure at this point, if by heating it up you have a little bit of filament ooze coming out of your nozzle, it'll make things a lot easier if you come in here and get rid of that ooze. You can pick it off with some pliers like I just did, or if you've got a paper towel, you can just clean it off very carefully. Keep in mind everything is fully heated at this point. Be very cautious as you put your hands anywhere near the hot end. So moving forward, let's go ahead and do our auto home. Go to motion and auto home. All right, so we've successfully homed the printer. Now the first thing we need to do before we even do any of our manual bed leveling with Marlin, we need to properly set our Z offsets. Now going into our configuration menu, and going to our advanced settings. Now we can go down to the probe offsets. Now first of all here, you'll notice that there are probe X offsets and probe Y offsets. These should already be set correctly to your printer. If by chance yours are not set correctly, you can figure those out yourself by simply taking a ruler and measuring the distance between the tip of the nozzle and the BL touch in the X direction and then the tip of the nozzle and the BL touch in the Y direction. Does this have to be perfect? No, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just the closer that you can get to the actual value, the better, because that will mean that you are more accurately representing the distance from here to the nozzle. Now, once that's set up correctly, again, we're in the configuration, advanced settings, probe offsets menu, 
Now, if you're running a current version of Marlin firmware, such as the one that I'm running on here, which is 2.0.9.1, you should have a Z probe wizard. This Z probe wizard is a lifesaver and really what you need to do this correctly. Now, how am I going to measure that offset correctly? Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that you need these thickness gauge or these feeler gauges, whatever you'd like to call them. Now, for the remainder of this video, I am going to use my very thinnest feeler gauge, which in this set is a 0 0.04 millimeter feeler gauge. Now, why am I using the smallest one? Why am I not using a 0.2 millimeter sheet of paper or a sheet of paper in general? Well, that's because all of these offsets actually assume that you're on the bed. And so the closer you can get to the bed, the more accurate your bed leveling will be. So again, using the smallest, thinnest one I have, which is this 0 0.04 millimeters. Let's go to the Z Pro Wizard. First thing you'll notice, it's going to home the XYZ again. So there we are. Now it's going to really raise up the hot end quite a bit off the bed. And why is it doing that? Well, it wants to make sure that your starting position is plenty ways off the bed and that it doesn't start crunching you into the bed. This is going to save a lot of people a lot of headache by starting higher than you're actually going to need to be. Now, once you're in here, you'll notice that it says, where is my probe Z offset currently? Well, it's 10 millimeters from where we were, which was 0.92, which is what I initially had it set at. Now, you don't need to know any of this. From this point, all we're going to do is move in smaller and smaller increments until that feeler gauge and that nozzle are touching, but it's not difficult to get that feeler gauge underneath it. So I'm going to start with the one millimeter movements, and I'm going to start lowering those down until my feeler gauge is being touched by the nozzle. And notice there, it popped up the, the whole hot end a little bit, so I'm too far. I'm gonna lower that back down. And I'm still too tight, because I can barely move this. I'm gonna lower it back down one more time. All right, next up, let's move it in 0.1 millimeter increments. So again, we're going down until we're touching. And there we're touching, but notice I can't get this back underneath it. So I'm going to raise it back up one. All right, that's as close as we can get. Now I'm going to go to 0 0.025. I'm going to lower it down until I'm happy with it right there. And you can see right there I can get it underneath. If I were to lower it any more, though, I couldn't. So that's where I'm going to start at. I'm going to save it there, and I'm going to say done. So now my new probe Z offset is at 0.73 millimeters. And we can move on to actually doing our four corners manual bed leveling. And in Marlin, that is going to be under motion, bed leveling, level corners. And you're gonna see that it moves. It's gonna to go to our first corner which is on the left side. And to show you this properly, let me change camera angles. All right, so here I am on the first corner. Again, I'm gonna get my filler gauge under there. This is a little too far. As you can see, there's no scraping. So I'm gonna to go to the right to tighten. Uh, just as usual, righty tighty, lefty loosey, you know, as you were taught. And that's good. Now we're gonna move over to the next corner. A little bit of filament under there, but it'll move out of the way when we start getting our probe. All right, now I'm gonna to move to the back corners. All right, that's good. 
Now, just to check ourselves, we can go ahead and do the middle. Now, if there's any problems with the center of the bed, there may not be anything we can do about it at this point. What's really important is that we have gone ahead and made sure the four corners are accurate. If the middle is off, then we're going to let our auto bed leveling take care of that for us. If your bed is warped in any way where the center is higher or lower, which is the most common, then we can't really do much about it. We have to get as much of the bed level as possible, and that's where the ABL comes in to fix things up. Now, on my printer, it looks like we're just uh, barely tight in the center, but overall, I'm really happy with how level this bed is. Now, what we wanna do next is go through the process one more time. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and we're gonna say done. And then I actually wanna rehome it now that we've done one round through the leveling. So I'm gonna go back to motion and do one more auto home. And this is to compensate with the fact that if we've made anything that has adjusted the bed too much, that home position may have slightly changed and we're going to double check that our home is still in the correct place, go around and do the manual bed leveling one more time just to verify where we are. So now that we've done our manual bed leveling, the only thing left to do is our auto bed leveling, which will set any compensations that we need for the print. So we're gonna go to the top of this menu, same menu we were in for leveling the four corners, and we're gonna hit this level bed, which has no additional menus. And that is going to start our ABL mesh process. Now this is gonna go around the bed to the various points that we've set up in our firmware. So for my firmware, for example, I've set a five by five grid for a total of 25 points. You can see that on the screen there that I have 25 points. It's going to go to each one of them, taking a measurement, and then that will be saved into the printer's memory EEPROM, wherever it's saving it on your particular printer. And that will be there for while it's printing to make those minor adjustments to make sure you're right on the bed where you should be. Now I do recommend that you do an odd number of points, so five, seven, nine, and that's so that you always have a middle point here. I do like to make sure I get a probe in the middle of the bed because that is the most common place that you're going to end up with the bed with a slight warp in it, either high or low. Now we'll let this finish and I'll be right back. All right, all done. Now is the perfect time to come in here to configuration and say store settings. Now, why is that? Well, what we've done here is just generated a bed mesh and we need to save that to memory. Otherwise, when you reboot, it will have no idea about that bed mesh and it will complain that your auto bed leveling has not been set up. So with all that done, it is time for our first test print so that we can actually dial in the exact distance we need that nozzle from the bed by using an actual print. And we're gonna use what's called baby stepping here. Let me get set up, be right back. Today's filament has been provided by Polymaker. This is their new Polyterra PLA. It is a low cost, eco-friendly PLA. I'm gonna take two seconds to show you on the computer all about it. So here I am on the Polymaker website, specifically the Polyterra PLA webpage. Now, Polymaker, you've probably heard of them before. They make a lot of different filaments, which I've used and had very good luck with. But specifically today, we're talking about Polyterra PLA, which is their brand new eco-friendly 3D printing filament that is also low cost and available on Amazon.com. Now, this video is absolutely not sponsored. They sent me some of their PLA to test and I was happy to do so because I'm very excited about this PLA because it is an eco-friendly PLA, wide range of colors. They even ship it on a cardboard spool, which is recycled cardboard and is recyclable. And it's a matte PLA, which is really nice, gives you a different finish and is easy to sand. And this also gives you very easy support removal, which I'm hoping to show you later in this video. But again, I was really happy to show this to you. It is an eco-friendly PLA made from renewable plant resources and has a low carbon footprint. So if this kind of thing is interesting to you to produce your own 3D prints while reducing the waste from the materials that you use, 
check out Polyterra PLA. I really think you're gonna be happy with it. Now it's time to take a look at how well it works for me. So let me load this up and we'll be ready to get our test print on the bed. All right, so we're ready for our first test print. Notice I've got you a couple of different angles here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now the close-up angle is the one that I am typically using when I am looking at this first layer to see if it's level. So I wanted to try to give you that close-up view that you can really see the depth of the filament. So what are we using for our first test print? Well, the first test print just needs to be something that prints in the middle of the bed, has a decent size base, that we can actually see how far we are from the nozzle, how far the bed is from the nozzle. So I choose just a 30 by 30 cube, for example, and that's what I'm gonna be printing here today. So I'm gonna go ahead and say print on that. We're already heated up, so we're gonna be ready to go. It's going to auto home like we always do, and then it's going to print our purge line here on the left. Now we're actually not gonna be looking at the purge line to start off with. In the future, if you get comfortable, you can start with that purge line. I'm going to primarily just be looking at that center print that's actually gonna be in the center of the bed. Now, as it's printing the purge line, I can go ahead and come in here to the menu and go tune, and we're going to go to probe Z offset. Now again, this is what people call baby stepping because we're gonna make minor adjustments to that layer to get it just right. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for a first layer that's not so squished that it's having to try real hard to squeeze it out and so that you can't actually see the filament. But like on this one, we also don't want it too far away to where it's actually more of a bead than it is a line. What we want is a good flat top to that print but you want depth because it's supposed to be 0.2 millimeters high. So what I'm going to do, if it's too far away, we want to go with a bigger negative number, meaning a, you know, instead of 0.73, we want 0.74, 0.75. I guess that'd be a smaller negative number, but you see what I'm saying. So since I want this a little bit closer, I'm going to actually decrease that number, which puts us closer to the bed. Now, if it was too close, we'd go in the opposite direction and make this a larger number. So I'm gonna go ahead. If I'm happy with it, then it should be, I should be able to fill a bit of an edge to it, but there should not be a bead, not to mention my line should connect. My line should connect between each of the lines, particularly when we get to the infill and if our lines are not connecting, it could mean that we're either under extruding or that we're too far away from the bed. If you see that there's a bit of an overlap or a bit of a raising between each of the lines, that means we're probably too close or that we're over extruding. So make sure, of course, that you have your extrusion set up really well before you do this layer. Otherwise, you could be miscompensating for an over extrusion. Now on this print, you'll see I'm pretty happy with this. You can see, again, there's that bit of a lip on there. This is looking really, really clean. On my print, you're going to notice that there was a little bit of filament that was on the nozzle, and that's making it into that first layer. That's not important. That's not what we're looking at here. In fact, once you're happy with that first layer, you can actually stop this test print. You don't have to let it go all the way through. But I like to let it go a little bit, finish up that first layer. Again, I'm gonna click on this one, because I'm happy with that, I ended up 0 0.04 from where I was, which is extremely close. In fact, if you'll pay attention, that's exactly where I was on my feeler gauge, which was 0 0.04 from the bed. So I actually leveled that perfectly, <laughs> which usually doesn't happen, but happened in this case. So now that that's done, I'm actually going to stop this print, because I actually want to take a look at that first layer. It's going to rehome here and really happy with how smooth that first layer is. Let me give you a close up so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so here I am with my first layer. Notice that what we're looking for here is a nice smooth paper-like finish. What do I mean by that? I mean we do not see any bulging or any spacing between each of our print lines here. We have a nice consistent surface with no gapping, 
no bulging. The only defect I see in this first layer is there is a bit of bulging here in the middle. And as I feel on it, I can tell that what happened there is there is probably a bit of filament that came off my nozzle and got in the way as this was laying down. So it rose up that center section. Not a big deal, that's not what we're looking at. We're looking for this, again, paper-like finish, particularly on a nice matte filament like this. It actually feels like a piece of paper. I can't feel the layer lines, even if I scrape my fingernail on it. So that's what we're looking for. That is a perfect first layer. So there we go. Let's go off and let's do a full-size test print on this printer, make sure we're happy with all of the settings. So when looking for our first test print for this video, I was looking for something that needed a really good first layer. So I chose a print that needed a really good brim because that is literally a one layer part of the print. So I chose this Hemdall sword print for Nico Industries, who is also the sponsor for this video. This is an excellent model of the Hemdall sword from the MCU or the Thor movies, wherever you're familiar with him from. So if you're looking for this print or other terrific cosplay and prop prints, take a look at Nico Industries. Now let's get started with this test print. I'll see you on the other side. So when it actually came time to print this model, it turned out to be a better test print for bed leveling than I had imagined. When I needed to print the handle, I found out I couldn't print it whole due to the interior and exterior geometry of this model. So to print it accurately, I ended up laying it down on the bed like this, sinking it into the bed halfway, printing this, flipping it over, printing the other half. Now we'll have to seam those two together. That's a great test to actually see if the bed's level because obviously I had to print from this end to this end and if the bed wouldn't have been level i would have had a lot of lifting and other issues with getting this to print just right and particularly when it came time to assemble it so i'm going to get this half off the bed assemble it with the other half put the blade in let's take a look at what the entire thing looks like assembled There we go, full model pulled off the bed. Let's get it assembled. there we go, Hemdall sword, complete, fully assembled, and ready to be finished. A couple notes on this prop. Number one, you're probably yelling at your screen that this isn't full scale, and you're right. This is the scale that it came, and for simplicity's sake, this is the scale I printed it at. And this is a, probably about a 60, 65% scale. I think it probably should be about 30 to 40% bigger, just looking at the pictures from the movie. So, so keep that in mind if you download this yourself that you may want to upscale it a bit if you want it to be full size. Number two, also keep in mind that this is just a display piece as it stands right now. I wouldn't use this for cosplay or obviously any sort of play fighting due to the fact that there is nothing assembling the top to the bottom to keep it rigid. If I was going to cosplay with this or if I was going to want to do anything physical with it, I would definitely upscale it put a cylinder down the center of the blade all the way into the hilt, and then run some sort of either a metal dowel or a screw all the way down this to keep it from breaking. This is gonna be pretty delicate. 
just to keep it from breaking while I'm working with it or when people handle it, the first thing I'm going to do is coat it in some sort of resin such as XTC3D that will add some rigidity to it as well as some layer adhesion between the layers. That should make it a little bit more difficult for it to be accidentally broken. Other than that, I think the model is gorgeous. I like the shape of the blade. I like all of the details on the handle, which printed terrific printing it flat, which typically isn't the way I would print something like this. So it's not going to be too hard to finish. And overall, I'm really happy with this model. <laughs> And there goes a little crack, I heard that. So a special thanks to Nico for providing this model. Actually, I got this one off of his Patreon, which you can find in the description. And thanks to Nico for sponsoring this video. Also wanna send one more shout out to Polymaker for providing this Polyterra filament. It printed extremely clean. I'm really, really happy with the results. Just so that you know, this is kind of a softer PLA material. It's not a real hard plastic when you print with it. So it's got a little bit more flex to it, which I really like. Uh, when printing things that might be a little bit more breakable. But anyway, really happy with how this model turned out. Let's wrap all of this up. So first of all, thank you for making it all the way to the end. I hope all the information in this video was really useful to you. I had planned to make this a 10 minute tutorial, but obviously I wanted to go really deep into this subject matter since I had not covered it here on the channel. So I hope that this was a thorough walkthrough of the information and you got all you needed out of this. Now, Obviously, I couldn't do this without all the help from my Patreon supporters, which is just exploding, and I can't thank all of those people enough. So whether you're looking for guides like this, which are going to be distributed to my Patreon supporters first, or to get copies of my firmware first that I release for the Ender 5 Plus, take a look at my Patreon and see if that's something that you want to help with that really helps to support this channel. And as always, none of that is necessary. I'm just happy that you stayed to the end of this video and most importantly, that you learned something from it. So thanks for watching. Again, I'm Chris and this has been Curzy Fabrications and I will see you next time.